Good morning guys, I'm very quickly getting ready for a day, I've got a busy day out in town, thought I'd bring you along with me. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do, please click the subscribe button, it's totally free, it just means you'll get updated when I upload a new video. So let me show you what I'm wearing today, I'm taking a bag with a change of clothes with me because I am gonna see Camille this afternoon and do a little dance class. It's probably the first time ever I've worked exercise into a working day. I find the logistics of it a little bit stressful, but it's at the end of the day, so I can just like head home afterwards. So I'm just taking with me like my trainers, workout clothes, because the studio, the dance studio that we dance in in Oxford Circus has a changing room, so it's perfect. Necklaces both from Miss Summer, really liking this combination, the chain and the kind of Roman coin necklace. And then I've got my Anine Bing t-shirt on, which I'm really enjoying just wearing untucked at the moment. On the bottom, how am I gonna show you? <laughs> how am I gonna show you? On the bottom, I'm wearing these Arquette trousers, which I don't think they do anymore. They're the wide leg, just gray trousers. They are so good. Feels like smart, but in my own style because the t-shirt's not very smart. And then I'll show you the full thing in a mirror in a sec. But I'm gonna just like layer on top this Uniqlo vest and just do up the top button. Yeah, I really like that. I've just sprayed on my Tenoir 29 Lilabo perfume, which I'm really enjoying. Anything else that I've got on? I'm gonna throw on my Uniqlo trench coat. I'm actually gonna sell my old and other stories one because I really like this one. I like the color, I like the cuffs, and it's just like the perfect trench. And then I think I'm gonna take my new bag, which is very annoying because I've got obviously a huge tote bag with my gym clothes in. I might be a little bit bag lady. I need to go downstairs and work it all out, but I have to have some breakfast before I go. I'm running a little bit late, so let's Let's head downstairs. This is the outfit without the coat on. I'm also wearing my green Sambas. Not 100% sure, but I like the kind of pop of color. Um, yeah, I like it. I like that it's kind of all gray, but it's got like smart elements like the bag and the trousers, but then more casual elements like the top and I feel very, very comfortable and happy in this outfit. In this vlog, I'm gonna try and talk you through the plans for our new dining space because I've got a good idea now of what we're doing. I think I'm at a point where I just need to kind of do it. And I've been working with Rebecca Wakefield again, who helped us kind of give our bedroom a bit of a makeover. We did that back in like 2020, I think. So yeah, I've got a lot of stuff to show you and talk through with you guys. So I'm just making a cup of tea. Um, I'll do that later in the video because I am out all day today. Starting off the day with a trip to the German embassy to apply for my passport. I got my German citizenship two years ago, I think. Yeah, it must have been because Rudy automatically gets one because he wasn't born yet. Whereas Grey, we had to apply for hers. So me, Grey and Rudy have German citizenships. Rich can't have one unless he like lives there for three years. I've mentioned it briefly before. It, it's, uh, I don't know all the like legal terminology, but it's to do with the fact that my grandpa, who was German, had to leave Germany during the war. So they've made it so anyone in that specific situation is entitled to citizenship. So it's not just the case that he was German, that I think that would have been quite hard to apply for a German citizenship. It's, it's the fact that he was forced to leave the country and kind of stripped of his citizenship. I don't really feel like I'm gonna benefit that much from it. I don't think I need a second passport or um, citizenship, but I did it for my children and future grandchildren and great grandchildren because now that I have it, and they have it, all future children in our family will be able to get it. And I think since like Brexit and stuff, it just gives my kids and grandchildren like more opportunities to travel and work abroad and who knows really. So why would I not take advantage of the opportunity if I can? He passed away when I was five and my family and I, because we've all now kind of got our citizenships and I think I'm one of the last ones to actually get the passport done. We're all going to Germany in May and we're gonna go back to the village where he grew up, which was, he was a, his parents were cattle farmers in a very tiny village in Germany. And we're gonna go back and try and learn about his childhood and where he lived before the war. Kind of, yeah, all go there together, me and all my cousins. I'm just taking Grey. She obviously is not gonna remember or understand the trip, but I'm gonna make a little book for her for her to read when she's older. So she, if she says, why do I have a German passport? I can explain. Um, Rich and Rudy are gonna stay at home because it's just a tiny village and there's like, Rudy will be so bored and I wanna be able to like concentrate and understand why we're there and explain it to Grey. So that's what we decided in the end. Anyway, all quite amazing. 
So head into the German embassy to get, to apply for the passport. I'm always like just so terrified of filling out forms wrong. And I've got so many things I need to take with that I need. And I just really hope I do it right. That's kind of in like the Chelsea area, I think. And then, do I want a whole bagel or do I want half a bagel? Then I've got a Blink Brow Bar event, which I'm really excited about. I've obviously been a genuine Blink Brow Bar customer. I would say since I was about 14 and I'm now 36. Is that possible? Has it even been around that long? Honestly, I think if it has, then that is genuinely true. I think it's the only place I've ever really trusted with my brows. When I first started getting my brows done, I used to wax them and then I found that it was almost like tearing my skin and it freaked me out. So I went to threading and I chose Blink Brow Bar because there was one near me and I've stuck with them since. They're the only people I trust with my brows. I think the people who do the brows there are brilliant and so kind and the whole thing is gorgeous and relaxing and the massage you get at the end is amazing and I love the founders of the brand and I just I'm really I really love it I've never actually done any work with them or anything before but I've, I've really genuinely been a fan of the brand for a long time they are hosting an event at their boutique in somewhere I'm really bad at that like Chelsea area I don't know it that well but somewhere around there I know it's like beautiful and gorgeous around there so it'd be nice to walk around so I'm heading there afterwards they're doing like a brown masterclass which will be really good and oh my god I've been saving my brows but can you see have you ever seen brows that need threading more than mine I'm so excited so yeah heading there getting my brows done hopefully at the end of the event that would be amazing and then seeing Camille for a dance class and if there's gaps in between, I will just head to a cafe with my phone, get some work done. But yeah, looking forward to today. If you guys haven't seen my recent videos, I've recently uploaded a vlog when I went to Scotland for 24 hours, really fun, like got dressed up for dinner, did a wellness walk, that was a really fun vlog, so I will link that here. Also did one of those videos that you guys love where you give me scenarios and I dress how I feel would be appropriate for that scenario putting together outfits, very kind of casual, loads of like outfit inspo in that video. And then my last video was a vlog, very like family vibes, weekend vibes. Again, I think you will really like that vlog. So those are my three most recent videos. I will link them all. Go have a watch if you haven't seen them yet. I think I was a bit cocky thinking that I could just wear a t-shirt and a trench coat today. My arms are cold, it's cold, I'm so confused. Some days it's warm and I'm like, woo, ready for spring and then other days. I'm reminded that it's very much still winter here. Okay, I've got 15 minutes to get to the German embassy. I'm doing good. London looking beautiful. So cool around here. So much history. I'm pretty sure behind that wall is Buckingham Palace Garden. So that's literally like the King's Garden in there. I mean, right on cue, just behind the red double-decker buses, look what we have here. <laughs> I feel like for those of you who aren't from the UK, this is gonna be like a real novelty. <laughs> this couldn't be more British right now. Look at them go. I filmed a little outfit video this morning and I was editing on the tube, which I don't normally do. I quite like editing on my computer. And obviously, really weird when people are looking over your shoulder, but the girl sitting next to me, she was super cool. She was wearing a leopard print Ghani skirt and black sambas. And when I got on the train, I thought, oh, I love her outfit. And then when I was editing, she was like, oh, tell us what app you use. <laughs> Turns out she's a stylist and she like does Instagram. And we were chatting and it was really nice. And yeah, it was a nice way to start the day. And now I really need that skirt. Okay, I'm just sitting on a bench. It's so calm around here in the morning. It's so quiet. Went to the German embassy. Totally forgot that obviously it's like super strict. You have to lock away. You like go through a metal detector first of all, and then you have to lock away all your technology, which for me means Apple Watch, phone, AirPods, camera, <laughs> tripod. Um, I had quite a lot of stuff in that little locker. Um, so yeah, definitely take a book. <laughs> If you're going i really didn't think about that but luckily it didn't take too long and it's all sorted now and i'm a little bit early i've got about 15 minutes till the blink brow event i cannot wait to get my eyebrows done just sitting in front of pan technicon i think it's called a really great little cafe japanese restaurant good toilets it's just like a good place to know massive building and i think i'm just gonna have a little walk around before the event starts also can i just say everyone's always raving about road and summer fridays but who remembers the clarins lip perfectors because they are like the ogs and they are so good this is zero five it's like a mix between a balm and a gloss oh 
it's so so good okay i found blink brow bar let's head inside uh but they were the ones that sort of believed that you know women needed to get their eyebrows done uh, at the time it was a very novel concept to be put onto a shop floor to get your eyebrows threaded in public if you think about a cartoon character okay when anybody's watching a cartoon if they're evil they tend to have quite a solid brow in the front and i think it's really important to just make sure that this area is really really soft and feathery but then i can use a lot more pressure in this area with the brush again it's super simple because you're literally just mimicking the strokes you yeah. see like most people you can see their little roots there and you're literally but they always seem to have their eyebrows and i'm always like i feel lighter i feel lifted my brows feel like me again i feel great that was such a nice event it was all for this eyebrow pen it's like a three-pronged eyebrow pen that i actually have at home so i'll show you when i get home because i've been using it and it's really great and i actually think people who have not as full brows as me will really really love it and get the most use out of it so I will show you that when I get home. I've got a little bit of time before I meet Camille for dancing, so I'm gonna walk into Soho and grab some lunch at this place I've wanted to try for so long. It's like a noodle wonton place. I can't even remember what it's called, but I've wanted to try it for ages. So taking myself on a solo lunch date. The wait was too long. Maybe another day. Okay, I just got changed, waiting for Camille. I go to a place called Dance Studios on Oxford Street. It's so cool here, because there's like people doing ballet in one room, and then there's obviously some sort of like West End auditions going on downstairs. There was a girl in the changing room who was like rehearsing. It's all like very exciting, dancey, singy stuff going on. And then there's just me bouncing around. Okay, made it. This is a nice bright studio. We haven't yeah, been up here. It's good, it's yeah. nice. This is, so this is Camille, you haven't properly met. Oh, no. <laughs> I literally just said to her, I've just been walking around London and I've just had a fish finger wrap, so that was a terrible idea. Now let's jump around and hope I'm not sick. Oh my goodness, I think I deserve a treat now. Gonna find something nice on my way home. <laughs> Went to the Selfridges food hall, got myself a Blondie's Kinder Bueno cookie. Mm. Mm. Guys, I was just scrolling on my phone, looking at photos, and I just found this photo of me and my grandpa, um, which is very appropriate for this morning's activity. I was only five when he died, so I must have been about four here three or four okay wow it's it's two o'clock i have to say today did not go <laughs> to plan um at all today was meant to be a working from home day i was going to be vlogging all day for you guys i had like a load of tiktoks i wanted to make loads of like stuff my notion to catch up on and like add many stuff i mean luckily it was a working from home day but i basically <laughs> gray had a school trip today and i was going to volunteer to go on it but when I put my name forward, they said, oh, don't worry, we've got enough parents for this one. So I'd kind of put it out of my mind. I got a call at 9.30. I was like sitting upstairs editing a video this morning in tracksuit, no makeup, you know, kind of not really ready for the day. I got a call being like, where are you? We're waiting for you. We've got you on the list as a volunteer for this trip. I was like, you said, you said I wasn't needed. And they were like, yeah, yeah, you're on the, li you're on the list, you're on the list. They're like, meet us at the station in five minutes. So I had to literally run out the house, no makeup. I mean, not that it matters, it's a school trip, but I would normally have a bit of makeup on my face. No makeup. I literally like forgot to put like tampons in my handbag and just like had to run out the house. And I just got home, it's two o'clock. It's been pouring with rain. I've been on a tube, a bus, <laughs> taking like primary school kids on a school trip. Um, and I feel a little bit like 
out of sorts this is not at all how today was meant to go and i've got an hour until gray finishes school but you know let's do what we can do i'm putting on a little bit of makeup now i'm going to talk you guys through our little dining space area as promised before it gets too dark and i'm just going to do as much work as i can within the next hour it was very cute to go on this little school trip i did originally want to go so i'm glad i went but just was not expecting that for today. I just got this the other day. It's Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in the light medium. I needed a new bronzer and it's very nice. Everybody loves it and for good reason. Just really like warms up the face. This is gonna be like the quickest makeup ever. Oh, I can show you the little Blink Brow Bar pen though, because I said that I was gonna show you that. My brows are looking very good after my little threading appointment yesterday. Very happy with that. Well, my lips are dry. I haven't like drunk any water or done anything. I've just been with loads of four and five year olds. Okay, I've got two. There's only two shades. There's chai and clove. So one's for more like blonder, lighter hair and one is for darker. I'm gonna go for the darker one. So can you see, I mean, I showed you yesterday. It's like three little prongs. It means that you can just draw in the brows really naturally. Just gonna fill in a little bit at the front and I do a little bit at the top here where it dips. I think this brow starts a little bit too far that way. So I'm gonna draw in a little bit here. I hope you can see. So I've gotta get the mirror really close to me because I've got terrible eyesight. It's kind of hard to go wrong with it because it's, it's a really nice kind of light, light touch product. And then it also gave us a clear brow gel, which is really nice. It doesn't dry with any sort of like white bits in the brows just sets them in place i'm literally just going to take what's left on my eyeshadow brush run that over the eyes just got like leftover products and i also feel like it sets my concealer in place a little bit and then i'm literally just going to put on a little bit of the hourglass mascara this is the clarins lip perfector in the 02 shade i just like bought a load of these the other day when i was in boots because i was just reminiscing at how good they were this is a lighter color Oh, the smell is so nostalgic. Mm. Okay, let's do this. Grey's little school trip was in a, to a bookshop. They had like an author reading out something from a book um, and like signing the book. But whilst I was in there and waiting, I actually bought a couple of new books for her. She's still like very much like reading a lot of her books that she's had her whole life when she was little. But I'm trying to kind of transition into more like booky books just want to check that we're actually in focus here um and i saw these and i thought these were really good because they're by julia donaldson who's obviously like so many of the kids favorite books she's written it's a different illustrator it's kind of feels like a next phase of book because they're like proper little books like how cute these are um this one's called the snake who came to stay and this one's called mr bird's nest at the house next door but it's julia donaldson so obviously they're still going to be amazing books and they're still like full of pictures but they're more like they're more like storybooks than like kids books does that make sense you know what i mean it feels like the next phase up I'm really excited by these because it's nice it means we can like read a couple of chapters together in the evening i really want gray to be more into books and reading than i am it's not to say that being creative is a bad thing but i'm definitely much more of a creative person than like a bookworm <laughs> Um, and I can already tell that Grey is very much into singing and painting and all the artsy craftsy stuff that I am into But I also I don't want her to just like become me I want her to be into some of the things that I like struggled with at school as well and I think by me showing an interest in them and learning with her that will help so things like reading more geography history maths like I don't want her growing up hating those things so I'm making a lot of effort to try and make those things exciting. We'll see. Very much in need of a hot drink after being out in the rain. But talking of artsy things, I have been spending my evenings, I feel like this year, I'm like the hobby queen this year. I've got so many different hobbies going on. But in the evening, I find that sometimes when I'm watching TV, I will just scroll on my phone, like endless scrolling, and then I'm not really concentrating on what I'm watching. But clearly I cannot just like watch a TV show. I need something to do with my hands. So in an attempt to put my phone down, I've started like, I basically got myself a little sketchbook and I've seen on TikTok, some people do this kind of like no pressure sketchbook thing. And it's like, basically you can do whatever you want in it and it's just for fun and it's no pressure. Um, I have a little watercolor set. So I've been experimenting with watercolors, but I also just started like a little pencil doodle and I've just been doing whatever. Like this is a little flower painting thing I did. 
And then Grey asked me to do a park, so I painted a, a terrible tree in a park. Um, and then last night I started this little doodle, which this is what I used to do on all of my school books when I was bored listening to the teacher. Can you see this like tiny little doodle? I'm gonna just like cover the page in that, very satisfying. And then we'll see, I'm, I wanna get some other paints. And I just like the idea of this being full of little pictures and paintings and whatever I wanna do. And it's really relaxing and fun doing it in the evening. So highly recommend a little no pressure sketchbook. If you want something to do with your hands in the evening, you don't scroll and you like being artsy. Okay, let me make my tea and then I will talk to you about our dining space area. Oh my God, I have 45 minutes. Okay guys, please be kind for this section of the video because please bear in mind, you probably all do things to your homes all the time and don't show anyone. And sometimes they may come out well, sometimes they don't. And it's a whole different ball game when you're sharing it with the whole internet, which I love to do, but Sometimes I do think, why why am I opening this up to other people's opinions? I could just do it and it not be this huge thing, but I love sharing it. But because I'm sharing this process live with you, I'm obviously gonna get a lot of opinions back and it can be quite overwhelming when I'm already trying to like make decisions and work out what I like and dislike. And then I'm happy for people to like share opinions, of course, but just like be kind because I often I feel like sharing these things, it's like my home, it's like my actual real home, it's not a studio space. I don't know, it can be quite tricky, but I really do wanna share it with you. So I can't remember what I've already told you and what I haven't, but the backstory of this area is we, when we first moved in, we had a table and bench set from Next. We previously in our flat did didn't have space for a big dining table so we just got that from next and it was fine but it was like fake wood so it wasn't a very nice table and bench but it was it was fine for what we needed and then we bought this like massive concrete table from made.com which we thought would go really well with the concrete splashback behind the kitchen but it actually was really bad quality it was huge and rectangular which I thought I always wanted but actually it just felt really in the way and having young kids it just we didn't host very much because it was like covid and it just felt like this big table that was in the way and one day I just decided to get rid of it because I just really wanted the space so we got rid of that table bought an extendable oval table from made.com and then the company went bust and we spent like months trying to get the money back because we didn't pay on credit card eventually got the money back and I felt a bit like I'm done with the dining table thing <laughs> I found it really hard to find a dining table I was looking for something wooden and oval possibly extendable and just nothing was right or in within the right budget or just found it all really overwhelming and over that period of time I was pregnant and having Rudy and I was like you know what I'm done with this whole dining space thing we just got a little table from Ikea which is what we have now it's way too small for the space it's it's a horrible cheap black table that we've covered with a wipeable tablecloth but it's fine and it also has meant that we able to move the table if we need the space we weren't ever sure if we definitely wanted this space to be a dining space because in the summer when the back doors are open it's it's quite nice we were like maybe we want this to be the playroom and we weren't really sure we didn't want to commit i've always wanted a built-in bench here but i didn't want to commit but now living here for as long as we have we know that there isn't space anywhere else for a dining table it can't go in this middle area because it's too small so this is where our dining table has to go and that's just how it has to be but we can do certain things to make it feel a little bit more spacious. It's hard to explain, but this area from the wall to our kitchen island isn't that wide. It may look wide on camera in photos, maybe because of wide angled photos or whatever. It's not, it's really not. And when you put a standard table, a standard rectangular table, there's not much of a walkway through to the back door. So that's really important to me. I don't want it to feel squishy when it's summer and the back doors are open. I don't want this massive table to be in the way. So these are things I mentioned to Rebecca Wakefield, who I wanted to work with on this. I wanted to work with an interior designer because one, I am time poor. I just don't have the time anymore to like research everything. Two, it is nice to have um, an expert who knows what they're doing to both like confirm your thoughts about things, but also bring in like a different element, maybe something you haven't thought about. And we worked with her on our bedroom makeover and we were really happy with that. There are, there's always like um, some things that I, like often Rebecca will choose things that are, higher price point than I want, but at least then I have an idea of the sort of style. So she'll say like, this light's perfect and I'll say it's too expensive, but at least now I know that the sort of light that she recommends to go there and I can then find one that I like that's in a similar style. So I still find it really helpful, especially when it comes to like the built-in bench thing. I found the logistics of that really hard. There's quite a few options. So I said to her, look, we know we want a built-in bench. We know we want an oval table because I want that kind of round curved feeling. Our 
Kitchen Island is a big rectangle and there's too many straight lines going on. I want something soft, curved, no pointed edges. I want to keep our dining chairs if we can because they were quite expensive. I don't really feel the need to change them. Oh, and then I kind of sent her some examples of things that I like. So I sent her this image and I said I really like how this has a bit of an overhang. I think it's nice when you're sitting on a bench that it's not solid underneath because then there's somewhere for your feet to go. Um, and I thought that looked a little bit less bulky. I sent her this image because I just wanted her to know that I'm not scared of like a pattern or a stripe. I said this image is like a bit of like a leather question mark, but our kitchen is south facing so it gets very hot in the summer. I feel like leather would get a little bit like sticky and hot. I sent her this image as like a FYI, I really don't like it when there's like a bit of fabric stuck to the wall like this. So the first thing she asked me to do, which I thought was really interesting, was can you send me five images of homes that you love? Um, it doesn't have to be kitchen dining space. I thought that was really good. So these are the photos that I sent to her and my style and preferences have changed a lot over the past few years and there's lots of things I would do differently with this house but that's fine. Like I very much look forward to our next renovation or if we ever redecorate a house or something. So some of these images might be a little bit different to the rest of my house but this is very much my style and taste that I'm into at the moment. So this is the first image I sent her. I'm pretty sure this is a Soho home image. I just love the warm colours, the oranges, the greens, the woods. Love everything about it really enjoy like pattern and clashing patterns and colors and stuff i have very much said goodbye to the beige phase of my life this next photo i thought was quite good it's like a built-in bench it shows a lot of like colors and textures and patterns again a lot of like warmth and coziness love this image love the checkerboard the greens the oranges they're all very similar and it wasn't on purpose i didn't plan this but when i put them together i was like oh there's very much a style here which i think is probably very handy for her the next image is lucy williams's home actually and i just i thought that was quite good for the leather sofa and the colors of it i like blues i don't think i would have that blue on my wall but i just love the overall like patterns and tones and vibe of this this photo and then this is the last one which is just gorgeous again greens tiles patterns wood warmth cozy love it sent her all my measurements and this is what she came back with you guys are getting a sneak peek here because i'm doing a little series on tiktok where i'm kind of talking through this in different parts i don't know if that's all gone up yet but this is jumping ahead a little bit she kind of went through section by section the built-in bench as we discussed the width of this is quite narrow so i don't have the width to have like a big padded back bench because it would just push everything a lot more forward and really restrict us. I already need to find a table that's about 100 centimeters. Do I mean centimeters? I'm really bad with like measuring. I think it's 100 centimeters wide, which is narrow, especially for oval. Most tables I've been looking at are like 200. They're like 240 long, 200 wide. I need like 240 long, but 100 wide, so it's narrow. So having a padded bench would just make everything a lot harder and to be honest, more expensive. I said to her, I really wanna keep the cost down. I know we're probably gonna have to move at some point. So the way I've kind of thinking about it is I'm happy to invest in the items that we can move, that we can take with us, dining table, chairs, artwork. I don't really wanna spend a lot on things that we can't take with us. So like the fabric on the bench, there are some gorgeous fabrics, but it feels like a waste of money. Cushions, they're movable. Okay, so for the bench, she recommended going for a wavy style, which is fun because as you know, I did Grey's bedroom in a wavy paint and I love that. And I thought that was a really nice idea. I feel like tongue and groove is a bit too country traditional for me. And then she said I could either do it in like a walnut and just keep it like a dark wood, or I could do it in like an MDF and paint it in a oxblood like gloss finish that would be like a dark maroony red with like a gloss finish and to be honest I really like both of those so I'd probably see which is more affordable I'd have to speak to like a timber timber yard and see like is it going to be more affordable to get it done in like a timber wood or is it going to be more affordable to do like painted what is that Oh, a helicopter. Obviously you would assume that MDF will be cheaper, but actually once you count in like labor costs of painting it and everything, it might not be. So we'll see about that. Either way, love both of those ideas. And then to not do a solid bench. And the reason she recommended this is we don't need the storage. We've got plenty of storage. And if you're looking at our dining space, like you're looking towards the back doors, having that block bench is gonna just make the space feel more narrow. And I also really like the idea of being open underneath. I know you can do drawers. I know you can do pull-up storage, but we don't need it. And it will be cheaper 
and it will give a more spacious feel. So great, love that. It's gonna save us on cost and I think it will look better. So it's just gonna be nothing underneath. Before we talk fabrics, let's talk about the style of the bench. Because of the measurements and how they are, she said I could either do a built-in bench and leave a gap either side, or I could curve it. My brother-in-law has also said that he thinks I could just go straight across and he says that depending on how it's finished, he said he doesn't think it would look that weird. At first I was all excited about the curve and I was like, yes, I'm gonna curve it, that's gonna look great. But to be honest, I'm worried about the extra cost when it comes to getting like cushions made and fabric made and I just don't want to have something that's, that's more complicated. because so obviously it's gonna be easier to just make a cushion in a straight shape. So I'm not sure yet what I'm doing in terms of shape. Obviously curved would be amazing, but I just don't wanna do anything extra and fussy you know so that's the shape and she's obviously been able to tell me like the, old, the optimum like height and of the the back of it and the seat and that's all the kind of details that I just wouldn't have known when it comes to fabrics she sent me a huge list of amazing fabrics and designs like some really gorgeous prints I'll put some on the screen now getting some ideas and yes as much as I would absolutely love to get a gorgeous fabric it just feels like I don't know like it has to be practical that's the problem when I first emailed her I was like look the kids are gonna sit on this they're gonna spill bolognese do I get something that's like wipeable do I go leather like what do I do and she said look maybe it's worth getting something cheaper knowing you might have to redo it in, in a couple of years and I feel like that might have to be the way that we go if we get this gorgeous fabric I'm just gonna get annoyed when it gets destroyed and as I said we can't really take it with us so I think I might go like really basic on the, the bottom on the seat on the padded seat and just do like a red or or a blue stripe and then for the cushions get something really nice either get something made in a gorgeous fabric or to be honest there's so many amazing cushions out there maybe I could just find some really cool ones and just get some loads of different like clashing prints and ones with like cool edges on and just like mix it up and have fun with that so I think that's what I'm gonna do dining table wise she did send me lots of options a lot of them didn't fit measurement wise after she emailed I sent her some more specific measurements and she found a few options for me I don't know if we found the perfect one one yet I definitely think like a tulip table would work best um, a tulip is when there's just like one thing in the middle rather than having legs I think it gives more of a spacious feel like an oval table with tulip in the middle and it also means we can kind of push it over the the bench a little bit which means we'll have more space it's just finding one that's right I want one that's kind of wood some of them are wood veneer some of them are real wood are they the right tone of wood they are so expensive it's tricky a lot of the ones that I really love are just too wide so we will see one of the best recommendations she gave me was to switch the so we've got three spotlights above the table she said switch the middle spotlight for a hanging light and it would just kind of ground this area make it a little zone and I was like yes that's a great idea she sent me this gorgeous light which I think I've seen Lucy Williams has um it's just too expensive for me to spend on a light it's this gorgeous light that goes up and down but now I know that that's the sort of style she recommends. I'm hoping I can find something similar. It won't be as amazing, but a similar vibe at a cheaper cost. And we could definitely do that. Something simple that I think will look really nice. We'll keep our dining chairs. She recommended changing the wall lights. Again, would be lovely. I just don't think it's necessary. We've got many other things that we want to spend money on. And I think these wall lights will be fine. So I'm not gonna do that. And then she recommended having a mix of different prints, like an art gallery wall. Um, which I'm quite surprised at. I thought she was going to say, like, get a big piece of artwork. So I can do that. I just need to think about what I kind of want there. But she did send me these kind of mock-ups of what the space could look like. Since then, we've changed our idea in terms of table. We're going for more of like an oval table. But it's nice to see what it would look like. And I'm leaning towards the oxblood over the, the wood. Because I just think, why not? It's a bit fun and it's rich in colour and I, I think I like it. I think it would look really nice with a wooden table. So that's kind of where we're at in terms of design. Lots there to digest. And her work is done. The problem is I now actually have to get this done. My brother-in-law, Rich's brother, was really helpful and he said that he might be able to help us. If not, I need to try and find a carpenter, timber yard and like, I'm just worried that I'm not gonna ever do it, but I really wanna get this done. So it's just getting the bench made. That's like the first thing. And then figuring out where I get like a cushion made for this bench and the I need to like source the fabric and then who puts the fabric on the cushion? What What is the cushion made from? Is it like foam? Is it feather? It's all those bits. Um, if I want Rebecca to help with that, that's like a whole separate thing. So I want to be able to do that myself. I just need to actually like get it done. And then it's like actually committing to a table 
I just don't feel like I found the perfect one. Do I get one made? I don't know, is that gonna be really expensive? My brother-in-law said if we find a base, like the pedestal bit, he can make the top. Hold me accountable, guys. Make sure I actually do this, because now we've got a plan. I feel like it's doable. Like the artwork will be easy. The light I'm not worried about. It's just the bench and the table, really. But I'm really excited. It'll be so nice, because the bench will mean that we can like pile loads of people in, and loads of people can fit on the table. I like the idea of an oval table. I think it's gonna be good if we ever do it. That was very rambly, but I think it's gonna be good. Where do I start? <laughs> I've got to go get grey in 10 minutes. So I think I'm going to wrap up this video. But I'll be back again next week. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.